So there's a developing story coming out of West Virginia that I just picked up on. I I've really heard much about it until I caught this story online. There's a truck driver. He's from Florida. And he was in West Virginia, and he claims self-defense. He, he, he has a permit to carry a gun. Mm -hmm. Like we always recommend people, mm -hmm. you know, if you're out there on the road and you have a carry permit, I always tell people I would have a gun in my truck. I would. Right. Anyways, he claims self-defense. He ended up shooting and killing somebody while he was in his big truck. Okay. I, I'm... I guess if it's self-defense, I don't see... They arrested him for second-degree murder. But it was self-defense. They arrested him for second-degree murder. I'm just, I'm just telling you what's going on. Okay. And what state was that again? It happened in West... It was, it, actually, here it is. It's in Williamson, West Virginia. It says, a Florida truck driver accused of murder that stemmed from an apparent road rage incident in Mingo County has posted bond and been released from jail. Now, it doesn't really give you you can kind of guess what's going on here but now listen to the whole setup of this this actual incident out there on the road and, and every truck driver that carries a gun or even you know is doesn't have any defense in his truck might be able to be you know in their mind they're going wow what if that happened to me or a lady trucker or a male trucker mm -hmm. his name is james armstrong he's from uly florida which is not far from us He's 66. So he's an older, I don't want to say he's older, but he's not a spring chicken like some of the, you, you know. You can call him older. When you're 66, you can be called older. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying to me that's older. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm just not, uh, he's, I'm, yes. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, he's, he's, it's, he's an older guy. You know, when you're 21 and you think of a guy that's 30, you think he's older. But anyways, he's from Uly, Florida. It says he was arrested October 7th. So this just happened a couple weeks ago. Okay. After he allegedly shot and killed Eric Sammons from Williamson. I'm sorry. Williamson police said Armstrong was driving a tractor trailer north on Route 119 when a red Chevy Cruze driven by Sammons pulled in front of him at an intersection, intersection pardon me, of Route 119 and Route uh, 52. Officers said Sammons got out of his car and walked to the driver's side door of the tractor trailer, screaming and cursing at Armstrong. Armstrong rolled his window down as Sammons was approaching the vehicle. The complaint said Sammons opened Armstrong's door and Armstrong then pulled a gun from his pocket, pointed it at Sammons and fired. One shot struck Salmon's in the upper chest, and he fell to the ground. It says that Armstrong's attorney uh, said that uh, his client acted in self-defense, said Simpkins tried to argue, and this is the lawyer, self-defense under the Castle Doctrine. He knew that he was mad. He was screaming, cussing. Sk Simpkins said, Mr. Salmon's, then opened the cab door, proceeded to breach the hedge of protection. Mr. Armstrong had no choice but to defend himself. A 66-year-old man weighing 150 pounds versus a 51-year-old 50, man that weighed between 240 and 250 pounds. So he's a, he was a, he was a, Smaller a, thin, a thin gentleman. Yeah, it was smaller and a lot older. If yeah. you're 66, you're frail. You're you're more frail. Depending on your... Listen, yeah. once you're, let's be honest, you know, when you hit 50 and you're sitting on the ground working on, like, your kid's swing set or something and you go to stand up, you feel freaking pain like you didn't when you were in your 30s and 40s. I'm not going to say no to that one, that's right. for sure. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, the older you get, the more frail you get. Your bones get drier. You're weaker. 66 is not a strong man. Now, there's probably a 66-year-old guy out there that could kick my ass. I'm there, thinking that. There might be. I'm thinking that. But that's the exception. Okay? Like, when Hulk Hogan turned 66, and he might, I still wouldn't mess with the Hulk. No. The Hulkster. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? There's still there's still those few that are very much in shape. I wouldn't mess yeah. with a 66 year old Mike Tyson. But let's be honest, the average six you just bite your face off. Yeah, the <laughs> average the average 66 year old man is probably frail and he's not as agile. And and you know what? If you weigh 150 pounds. Okay, seeing a 250 pound man, 100 pounds heavier than you, approaching you, flipping out. And, and look, we haven't even talked about what actually transpired down, back down the road. But right. I know this, uh, I'm, I'm, if I'm 66 years old, I'm, I'm going to be uh, feeling scared. And if I have a gun, there's a reason why you have a gun with you. Go ahead. For protection. You have a gun with you to protect yourself against the people that are crazy. Yeah, and when someone gets out of their car acting crazy, like this report says, you know, you've got choices. I'll tell you what, it's a hard choice to make. Well, and there is a lot of things that go on there. When you um, when you get a permit, when you get the, the permit to carry your gun, mm-hmm. it states that you use the gun. When you feel your life is threatened, when you, it, and that's the that is the and key it, and threatened. It, and, it, and when we went to get ours, the 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 officer that was giving us the test said, "If you feel your life is in danger, you shoot, because you have the concealed permit. You shoot them because it's not worth your life not being not having it. That's why you get the concealed carry. Now, the only thing that I can wonder is is the concealed carry effective." In West Virginia, the Florida one that he was carrying, because I know some states don't accept other states. I think West Virginia is one that recognizes, but that's that's here or there whether whether the gun would be legal legal or illegal. I don't think that that really has bearing on you defending yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's like anything in front of you. If someone comes at you and you pick up a, a rock or a a knife or a, a a hammer to defend yourself against somebody a lot bigger than you, I don't think. You know what I mean? It's not like you're inside a boxing ring and they say, oh, use an illegal weapon. I don't think that's the case. But I really don't think that, that it would be illegal for his Florida permit in West Virginia because there's, I think it's 38 states actually accept. And that was when you and I got our carry permit years ago. They, mm-hmm. There was 38 states. There might be more now for it all we be. know. Might be. But here's another thing they have to look at. Usually when, uh, at least in the state of Florida, if someone breaks in your home and you shoot them, Mm-hmm. that's legal because right. it's inside your domain. It's inside your home. Outside of your home, it's a different story. A truck driver, his truck is his home. That's what that's what I think they meant by mm-hmm. that castle the, defense. The, the, well, and, and unstating that it was his um, security, his, you know, that was his domain. That's his home. When you yeah. live in your tractor on the road and somebody wants to breach that tractor in an aggressive manner, mm-hmm. they're breaking into your home. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, a, a totally different story. It's, it's like a camper almost. You know, actually, I think a tractor trailer probably is fits more under that de- that, that defense, that castle defense, because a, a truck driver's, the average trucker's probably in there two to three weeks at a time. You know what I mean? The only thing he doesn't get in there is his mail. Well, he gets his email, but he doesn't get his, his paper mail there. Right. So if you think about a man that's been driving tractor trailer all his life, most likely, if he goes home every two to three weeks, that means he sees his family two to one to two times a month. Okay, add that up in a year, it really doesn't come to much. You're living in your truck, so mm-hmm. you're right. That's a good uh, ob- 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 observation. Mm-hmm. You know, something else I was thinking about. You had mentioned about, you know, when we got our permits, what the instructions were. Do you remember what they also told us? They said, "Listen, if you pull that gun out." When you feel threatened, you he said there's a couple things you never do, and there's there's a couple reasons why you never pull your gun out when you have a, a carry permit. He said, one, you'd never pull one out. Like he said, for example, some people get in trouble going down the road. Somebody gives them the finger, is is kind of gives them a threatening, you know, swerve at them, and they pull the gun out just to show them, look, I got yeah, a gun. You might want to you might want to piss off because right. I have a gun in my car. Guess what? You're going to get arrested if they call the cops. You, there's no, you don't call, pull your gun out just to say, hey, back off. And you sure don't pull it out to go freeze, stop, okay, mm-hmm. uh, or, or I will shoot. He, they told us point blank, if you pull it out, you better be ready to use it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying this, 
if if you read on, I, I don't know in this in this article here. Let's see here. It said they had originally given him a two hundred thousand dollar bail, cash bail. Okay, so you did read it. Well, mm-hmm. he, and he was. There was another article that I read. It said they 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 charged him with second degree murder. See, the magistrate in West Virginia normally. Normally they I, 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 they they'll put it bef- before a board, and then they decide if it's going to go before a grand jury if there's enough evidence that, that a crime was committed. But it said in the one article that I read, the magistrate. I guess when the incident happened that night, they brought him to the local magistrate. Mm-hmm. The magistrate went ahead and signed documents or whatever, and forwarded on to go to trial. He he felt there was enough to prosecute this guy for second-degree murder. Now, here's the other thing I would say. Local magistrate, the guy's from that area. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I'm not saying West Virginia, but I am saying small small little town, nobody wears shoes probably there, right? And, and you know, Cousin John just got killed by a trucker from Florida, and guess what? We're going to hold him over for second-degree murder. I mean, why else would you say... That night, that's second degree murder when he's a uh, hundred pounds less and ten years older, going on, you know, not gonna be far from being seventy years of age. And now you're saying second degree murder, but anywhere else it might be like, let's you go home and we'll if there's charges, we'll bring you back in, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it says here it would be charged with second degree murder. Right. I mean, it just doesn't make sense, but it does make sense if it's your town, you're the magistrate, and you might possibly know the guy that just got shot. What do you think? I think that the chief even said that Sam has lived nearby, so he's got the home turf advantage there in a, in a sense to where people are going to want more justice. The outsider is going to have a harder time proving his, his innocence. It says, you know, it's it's just going to be difficult. I I think this is my cousin Vinny all over. Yep. I really do. Cousinomics. So, anyways, we'll have to try to follow this case maybe. Um, see, you know, I, I'll tell you something before we, we move on to the next subject. I feel for the guy. You know what I mean? I feel for, and, and again, we don't know this guy from Florida if if he was... A great guy. All right. Well, I think that it's time to move on, and maybe we'll go ahead and uh, just keep checking on this story to see exactly what what actually transpires and what the end result is. Because I really am, you know, I I would like to see uh, what is ap- actually happened to the guy. And you know, again, it doesn't matter if somebody has, you know, a past or not. I don't know that he does. Um, all I know is he's a 66 year old man. And he's a truck driver and feared for his life. And that's what it sounds like to me. So I'm just going to go with that until proven otherwise. I'm going to take the guy's word. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. And I think the magistrate should have took his word too because I don't see where you can say... uh, Here, let me just say this also. If you think about this one thing. What transpired? Obviously road rage. Maybe... And and here's what happens. Maybe, Maybe the truck driver... Maybe. Cut him off accidentally. You know, maybe, or maybe the truck driver is going too slow on a back road and the guy's getting more pissed off and he finally goes around him, gives him the finger. Maybe the guy gave him the finger back. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is road rage happened, all right, and somewhere along the line, that vehicle was trying to, in another article that I read, it said he was trying to get him stopped. He, so he cut him, he came, he cut in front of him and, and stopped at an intersection so the trucker, I guess, couldn't get around him. And that's when it all happened. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I see something that says that, too, where he blocked him at the intersection, the tractor trailer. That I just don't understand. Here's here's what I'm kind of getting from, you know, usually when someone has road rage, it's, they're always having those same incidences. If this is a small town and they know him, they're going to be people that say, yeah, he's he's aggressive. He's always screaming and hollering, cursing and driving stupid. And If he does. You know. So if that is the the clear case, then there should be able to have enough proof to show that the truck driver was innocent and definitely just protecting himself in an area he's not accustomed to. Yeah. And look, I'm not trying to defame the character of the guy that was killed. You know, prayers to his family. I'll, I'll say that up front. I'm not saying he was the aggressor. I'm just saying 
the word we got was from the truck driver that he was acting in self-defense. And like the lawyer said, you, you breach someone's castle. Guess what? They have a right to defend the castle. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's the bottom line. I have a right to defend my castle. You come in, and a lot of times when somebody opens the door, they're grabbing onto you trying to pull you out. Now, it didn't say that, but you, you start coming up in that track there, you're, you're crazy. Mm-hmm. And you're now, it's almost, it's no different than coming in someone's house. So let's go ahead and move on. But let's, let's, uh, um, let's try to stay with this just to see what happens to uh, the trucker. Okay. really would like to. And again, prayers for the family that lost the guy. I don't like to see loss of life for anybody. But anyways, moving on, we've got a sponsor today, National Carriers. Today's podcast is brought to you by National Carriers. Their phone number is 888-311-7076. National Carriers has beautiful Kenworth T680s. They're looking for students, solos, teams, and lease drivers, regional, OTR, you name it. They got to Give them a call and see if what they have uh, fits what you're looking for. Again, 888-311-7076. Ruth, I'm moving on. Moving on. Okay, so one of the biggest subjects going on today is what we what they call the jab. The jab? The jab. That's what they're calling the vaccine. Ah. Yeah, the jab. Have you gotten the jab? And, you know, obviously there's mandates on trucking companies that are over a hundred trucks. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. Some of the things that we're seeing, you know, people are being divided once again by something. And it now it is now the shot. You know, some people feel you got to get it, but you have a lot of friends that are nurses mm-hmm. and healthcare workers. And most of your friends that are healthcare workers are refusing to get the shot. They are absolutely saying, no, you got one friend that did get it. And then you got another one that's saying, absolutely not. There's no way I'm going to get that. Right. It's, it hasn't been, it hasn't been on the market long enough for that to go into my body is what they're saying. Right. Well, the, the, the one that got the shot, she works in a uh, rehab facility for elderly people. And um, she got it because anybody that's there has an extremely low immunity. They're old. And I don't know if it was mandatory for them, but she did it just as a safety precaution for them where the one that has not received it works actually at a hospital and she works on one of the upper floors and, you know, she is refusing to get it at all costs. And the way I understand that hospital is about 60, 40 as far as, People that have gotten the shot are 60, 40 have not. So 40 have not. I, I'm 40, not, about 40% have not received the shot yet at the hospital. Okay. Oh, at that particular? Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I was reading some stats the other day about, you know, doctors and nurses that are saying absolutely not. They've fired some. Um, and some, some are trying to l- lay back on the requirements because of short staffing and mm-hmm. everything. It's it's really not a whole. It's like fifty seven percent or something like that are, are have gotten it, and almost so you almost got half the country. Well, half of the medical staffs saying that um, I'm I'm just not sure about this, and a lot of them are saying because I've seen some studies where like only two percent said they're going to get it if forced. Everybody else is like, I'm going to quit if you force me. I'm quitting. So. It's not just the fact that people are unsure of the actual shot going in them since it was developed so fast. It's also a matter of you telling me what I have to do. And that's more, that's a big thing with people are like, no, it's my right. It's not, it's not just that. Um, There, there, if once you have it, just like any other virus, your body builds its own immunities to it. And they're injecting you with something that's not your natural body's immunities. So what's happening with my particular friend is she's like, I'd rather get it, build my own immunities, and then I don't have to worry about that. I have them then. She'd rather get the... She'd rather get COVID. She'd rather get COVID to build up her own immunity. Exactly. Because that's how... it. You know, the way she's viewing it is it's not much different than having the flu or any other virus that's, 
you know, you just get a very bad case of it. It hits everybody differently because, you know, it depends on underlying conditions. It depends on what kind of habits you have of eating. You know, there's so many different factors that go with it. But generally, it's easier to, I mean, my 80-year-old mother got COVID. Nice. She's perfectly fine now, but she still has underlying conditions. But she didn't pass away from it. She got it. She's And she's going to, she is 81, right? She's 81 now. Yeah. She got it over a year ago, so she's, you know, she's doing perfectly fine now, but it's, it's, there's, there's still a lot of factors, you know, there's too many questions on it, and the way she's saying is, I don't know enough about that vaccine anymore. We're seeing patients that have the vaccine that are still getting it, so it's not that it prevents it, it just helps lessen the effects of it. That's what they say. So if you are not, if you're getting if you're going to get it anyways, it's just going to help lessen it. It's not any different than what happens now where some people get it worse than others. So there's really not a difference. And she'd rather not be forced to get it and not know enough about it. I, I think that it's less than 1%. Literally point some percent is what we you know of people die from the COVID. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to lessen it in any way. It's obvious that it's out, that, that it does exist. I had it, I had it for 12 days and lost, 12 pounds. I mean, I literally um, did not feel good and I slept the entire time, but it, it hit me differently. I didn't have a, a breathing problem. Um, what, you, you were talking, or did you have something? Well, I actually got the statistics from the CDC on it. Right on, now. on what, the COVID shot? No, actually, it's not CDC. It's the New York Times statistics, which kind of really coincide with the... Yeah, New York Times. It, it's you just, really want to give their stats? I mean, for it's, real? It's it's really close to might as well, CDC. Might as well read the Washington Post uh, stats also. Well, Not he, the most reliable. Here's what I, I, I'm laughing at, okay? Go ahead. And the reason I'm saying this is because how many people are in the world right now? In the world? Yep. I don't know. It's like 7 billion plus in the United States. I don't know okay. how many in the world. Well, not the world. The United States is what I meant to say. Okay. Are, okay. We, th- are we the world? We are the Come world. Come on. Go on. Okay. So how many billion are in like the... Like a little over 7 billion, I think, okay. in the United States. Cases in the United States are 45.4 million. That's that's how many total. Cases. In, in mm-hmm. two years, that's how many total had right. it. Yeah. Now, as far as deaths, 736. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Let me go back. People are probably going, Dutch, right? It's a little over 7 billion on the earth. It's it's 350 million, I think, in the United States. That's what it is. Okay. I, I stand corrected. My brain was... Ooh. Yeah, okay, I apologize. Go ahead. So three hundred, a little over 350 million, I think, in the U.S. Okay, well, 45.4 million right. cases in the U.S. had... has cases of, of it, but we all know there's right. some that... And I think it's like 700 and some thousand died or something like that. 736 are the ones that, that have had deaths. Out of that, California, Texas, Florida, New York, and Illinois are the top five contributors. So where is it? California, New York? California, Texas, Florida, New York, and then Illinois. Illinois, wow. So okay, those are the top five that have the cases and deaths the most. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So again, you know, I, 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 again, the jab to me is your personal, your personal choice. What did, um, your, the school owner, the, the dancing school owner that our daughter goes to is called Debbie Cole school of dance. Mm-hmm. And you were talking to Debbie the other day mm-hmm. and she was in Walmart. Yes. Right. So tell, yeah. tell us what, uh, I guess she was complaining about the cupboards being bare over yeah. there at Walmart. T- tell us she, that little story. Okay, so she said, she asked one of the employees, she said, hey, why is there nothing on the shelves for Christmas? Why is nothing, you know, you're not getting anything out yet. Christmas is only like a little over a month away, blah, blah, blah. And they said, um, because one of the shipping containers, but then they mainly said, the reason we're not getting anything here is because our Walmart drivers don't want to get the vaccine. So we don't have enough drivers for Walmart to move our merchandise. So they're short drivers right now because mm-hmm. of, of the jab. They don't want to get forced to get the shots. Mm-hmm. So now, I, and which brings me to my next statement here. You and I, we're going to a, a Blue October concert. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, which they require a negative COVID test. Right. So we went ahead and got the thing shoved up our nose. Yes. In yeah. fact, it's it's actually, you have to self-inflict. They make you do your own shoving. Yes. Which is sucks. <laughs> So there we are. We're getting this, and we come in, and we end up talking to the lady that just administered the test. And we asked her, and and I'm the reason I'm getting at this because it's I think it's good news for trucking companies. We I asked her. I said, "So you're being forced to get the shot because you guys have over a hundred employees?" She goes, "Yeah, we do. We have a they have thousands of employees." She said, "But because we're individual stores, we don't have to." No, it was a Walgreens. Oh, what did I say? Yeah, I don't know if you said it or not. I just put it out there, though. Yeah, well, I thought I said Walgreens. But anyways, so she's telling us because even though they have thousands of employees and they're owned by a company in Europe, Walgreens employees are not being forced to get the the COVID shot or the, the vaccine. Right. Well, trucking companies, and this is really what I'm getting at, trucking companies that have 100 trucks or 100 employees or more, are being told they have to have the jab. They have to get the vaccine. Well, if Walgreens, because each facility doesn't have 100 employees on location, Mm -hmm. does not have to get the shot, why should a trucking company that has, let's say, 40, 50 people maybe there during the day, but they have like say four or five hundred trucks. There's probably never a time where they have a hundred employees on the at the actual terminal. It almost sounds like they should be able to fall under that same rule that Walgreens is falling under. For example, you know, a trucking company like um, say, uh, just trying to think of a mid. Uh, what, what's the name of that company that was in uh, Ohio that we that used to come on the show? Uh, what was that called? Let's just say you're a 400 truck company, right? And you're an over the road company and you have maybe 35 people that are on staff in in the building, 40, 50 even. And you have like, say, maybe 10, 15 drivers coming and going, but most of your trucks are out there on the road. Right. There's not many that come in at the same time. Right. My, My whole point is if I don't have 100, if I hardly ever have 100 people here on my lot, Why should I have to give all my employees, why should I be forced to force my employees to get the jab? Therefore, you already know, what is it, December 8th, I think, is the deadline already? Okay, now you have a trucking company that has over 100 employees, and they're being told, listen, we get, you got to get the shot. You re- really got to get that shot. And everybody's going, you know what? Screw you. I'm out of here. I guarantee you it's going to hurt more trucking companies. Well, I could tell you that um, the ATA, which is the American Trucking Association, that president and CEO Chris Spears, Spear said that he, is, um, he submitted to the White House a formal request that truck drivers be exempt from President Joe Biden's looming vaccine and COVID testing mandate expected to apply to companies above 100 employees. It, it, it. To be honest with you, that's what they should. And you know, I was reading also that owner operators are not going to be subject to it because, you know, unless of course they're, I don't know if they're leased onto something. You had something to say? Did I cut you off? Well, I mean, I don't think that any company should be forced to do it. But this person here from the ATA is saying basically, you know, under, and it's the same thing that's going on right now with the cargo giants. They're, all of the stuff that's being off on the side of the of the of California, those cargo ships are now creating a pre-holiday panic where everybody's starting to panic, wondering what's going to happen for the holidays. Absolutely, and that's that is another big thing. With I, I don't know if that's affecting that you're talking about the cargo ships. At, yeah, it's saying it's affecting the UPS and FedEx and everything. Right. I don't know if that has anything to do with the vaccine right now. Oh, it does. You're shaking your head. Yes. So you're, mm-hmm. so a lot of people out there are saying the same thing. We're not going to get it. We don't want to get it. You know, I, I'll tell you honestly, if you really think about it, um, there's there's so many arguments one could make not to get the shot, and there's arguments you could make to get the shot. Me, I personally, what my belief is, I believe it should be my my whole 
decision. The yeah. only, the only, the only, Ruth, and the only way I would ever say the whole world needs to get the shot, the only way I would, I would say you got to do it, is if people were dying in record droves. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. If they were just dying in record droves and it, by the millions, you know what I mean, or, or even a billion, you know, you, you, you don't even have... Uh, I don't even know what the, the the number is, but unless it was really, really detrimental, I I, I I'm t- telling you, I don't think that you should make anybody. I don't think anybody should have to be made to do something they don't want to. I really do, and and there's so many crazy stories coming. You know, it's really something else. Also, I don't really hear about the COVID that much. I hear about the COVID shot. But I don't hear about the COVID itself a no, lot. No, it's been decreasing. Literally, I, l- I looked up the CDC the st- statistics on that, and it's decreasing. An average, it was like one week, it was like 11%. Another week, it was 16%. So it's dropping every week. It's dropping, you know, averaging maybe 15% yeah. each week. So, listen... Write into us and let us know what your opinion is on the jab. I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, do you think that everybody should have to get the jab? Do you not think, do you think that everybody should have their own choice? Put it that way. Okay. Uh, write in. Let us know. And uh, we will be right back after this. What do you say? Station identification. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about this pause from our sponsors? Our next sponsor, today's podcast is brought to you by... Carter Lumber. Carter Lumber has 166 locations from the Mississippi East, and they are looking for drivers that are strictly local, home everyday truck drivers. Um, they have full time benefits. They have, um, like I said, they're in 13 different states, and they are looking to talk to you if you have a Class A CDL. They'd like to get you home every day, pay you good, and give you good benefits. Their uh, address that they want you to check them out at is carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. That's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Look them up. Let them know we sent you over there. Ruthann, guess what? What? I got a new segment I want to do. Uh-oh. I call it comment of the week. Comment of the week. Yeah, remember we were talking about that the other day. You said it's probably a good idea. Oh, yeah. Just, just get the fans a little more involved, you know what I mean, with this. I mean, I love, I mean, this. the reason that Talk CDL it has so many uh, people following, you know, the downloads and everything is just huge, um, is because of the people. You know, it's nothing yeah. to do with us. Praise the, uh, praise the Lord. Let me just say, here's a comment, and it was on a post. We had a post this week on Facebook, and it was showing a Tahoe, which is like a little SUV, Chevy Tahoe that hit a tractor trailer. Mm-hmm. And it, Ruth, and it looked like, like a lot of guys were commenting that it looked like it was a motorcycle. That's how little was left in the wreck. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the comment of the week comes from a young lady. First one is going to be a lady. Her name is Rose Ellis. And here's what she said. She says, I always say that if people would ride in a big truck or a big rig, rather, they would understand how some people in cars do some stupid stuff as me. As for me, I have rode with all over the country as a passenger with my husband and as a driver of my car, I give them their respect. Because a lot of people were thinking maybe the Tahoe was, you know, um, reckless driving, whatever, just flying. I don't know. You really can't say. But just looking at the way there was nothing left of that vehicle, he hit that at, like, full speed. There was a lot of impact, a lot of force. Right. So congratulations, Rose Ellis. Today is your lucky day if you write in or call us. Actually, write in to Talk CDL. We will send you a hat, a Talk CDL hat and a Talk CDL t-shirt for having the comment of the week. How do you like that, Ruth Ann? I just pulled that out of my pocket. <laughs> you were going to say my ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. Well, that's why not? Comment of the week. We're going to give out at least a hat and a t-shirt if we remember to do it again next week. <laughs> we kind of forget things I do. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think uh, we, we've Definitely got... Definitely message us, Rose. Right. Well, we've got one last sponsor. You want to go ahead and give out that sponsor's name? J.J. Keller. 
J.J. Keller. The trucker secretary. You call him the trucker secretary. I do. I do because you know why? Because they are there for the trucker in any form that's needed when it comes to filing your paperwork. So give them a call. Their number is 888-601-2017. Even if you don't know exactly what to sign you know, what to fill out, give them a call. They'll answer your questions. Yeah. These people are awesome and they can help you. I promise you put them in your back pocket. Ruthann, I think that's the podcast for the day. Do you have like the word of the day from word genius? And do you possibly have a joke today? Uh, I actually have two jokes, two jokes All and right. the word. Now I, I, I just, let me just say this. If you're out there and Ruthann's jokes are irritating the crap out of you. <laughs> I want you to write in and let me know, and we'll cut that out. Because she just, you know, we did not plan. Ruthann, tell these people, we did not plan you doing jokes. One day nope. you just showed up with a joke, and now you're trying to do this every every mm-hmm. week. I like my jokes. Some of them I are know stupid, you, some of them are funny. I know you like them. Okay, so let's hear the but joke. This is good. This is good. It's actually pretty funny in my opinion. Let's hear it. What's the difference between a politician and a snail? I don't know. One is slimy, a pest, and leaves a trail everywhere. And the other is a snail. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually very funny and true. And I like, I can appreciate that because you know me and politicians. Go ahead. What else you got? Okay. Do you want the word or do you want oh, the other joke? Yeah. Okay. The other joke. Imagine you're in a room with no windows and no doors. How do you get out? Wait. Imagine you're in a room with no windows and no doors. How do you get out? Mm-hmm. Tell me. Stop imagining. Stop. Oh, that's fine. That's yeah. true. Stop imagining. Duh. Uh, okay. So, word of the day uh, by word genius, please. Let's hear it. Servine. What is it? Servine. 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 C E R V I N E. Servine. It is an adjective. Objective. Adjective. Adjective. Let's hear the definition. Relating to deer, deer like. Really? Mm hmm. Servine. Servine. So let's hear it in a sense. The ballet dancer had a charming servine style for footwork. I made a servine costume to go along with the woodland theme of the party. Okay. Servine. Somebody just got smarter. Well, I mean, I think it turned out, I, I actually like that word because, you know, some people say, you know, when they're running, you know, oh, they run like a deer. They could say, oh, they're so servine like when they're running. He's so servine. I'm going to use that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.